So just for the conflict, will you heed the call? Will you answer quickly with a ready cheer? Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? A volunteer for Jesus, a soldier true. Welcome to Answer the Call the radio ministry of Heritage Baptist Church and Pastor Curtis McMiller. You know, folks, back in the 1740s, America was in a spiritual crisis over freedom, and pastors on horseback were preaching revival to every city and hamlet across our land. The Christian settlers answered the call, defeated a tyrant, and became the America we know. Today we have a tyrant of our own making, the invisible tyrant of unbelief, and once again, our pastors are raising the alarm, encouraging us to fight against this enemy we can't see. Here's Pastor McMiller to show us how to once again answer the call. Hello, friends, and welcome once again to another edition of the Answer the Call broadcast. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home this evening. If you have your Bible nearby... We're going to be turning to 1 Peter chapter number 4. 1 Peter chapter number 4. Now, of course, if you're not a student of the Bible, this portion of the Word of God could be located in the New Testament. And if you've gone to the book of Hebrews, you'll want to continue forward just two books and you'll come to 1 Peter. Our text this evening will be 1 Peter chapter 4. And we're going to be reading verse number 1 through 7. Note with me once again, verse number 1. The Bible says, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh, to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles that we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revilings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye walk not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Thanks for tuning in tonight, my friend. Tonight, we are going to be looking at a new subject entitled Armed and Dangerous. You will note that Peter does not command us to be armed by our neighbors nor does he encourage us to be armed by our wives. But rather he says, arm yourself. Note verse number one, Peter says, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise. I don't know about you, but I just believe that armed people are dangerous people. They are dangerous to criminals. They are a danger to compromisers. And yes, my friend, they are dangerous to the devil's crowd. A person who is armed and dangerous is a person who is to be watched out for. He is a person or she is a person of interest. Now, people who are not armed are no present threat to the devil at all nor to his crowd. But those who arm themselves are considered dangerous. Moses was considered armed and dangerous. For with the rod of God, he was able to lead God's people through the Red Sea on dry ground. Samson, at one time in his life, was considered to be armed and dangerous. 
for with the jawbone of a donkey, we are told in the book of Judges that he was able to slew or to kill 11 men. That powerhouse of a prophet Elijah was also considered to be armed and dangerous for it was with the equipment of special prayer that this man of God was able to pray in a way to which the very windows of heaven shut their doors so that rain would not fall. Notice with me the words found in James chapter 5, verse number 17. The Bible said, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. But then the Bible says, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. You see, my friend, armed and dangerous people are a threat. Now, I would suppose that every blood bought, every blood washed, born again, child of God ought to be a person of interest. They ought to be people who are considered armed and dangerous. Now, you might be asking, well, preacher, in what area should God's people be armed? Well, let me give you three areas by way of introduction. And tonight, I am sure we're not going to get through all of these. But let me present to you three areas to which I believe God's people ought to be armed. And of course, dangerous. First and foremost, they ought to be armed with the scriptures. Listen, friend, I am amazed at those who have been saved for so long and yet know so little of the word of God. Few can give you verse and chapter of the word of God concerning what they believe and even fewer can quote more than five verses out of the entire Bible as to what they know and what they believe. It was a word of criticism when Jesus said to the Sadducees in Matthew chapter 22, verse 23, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Friend, that ought not to be so concerning God's people today. We have so many different resources to which I believe God has provided us with in this end time generation to help equip us in the arena of knowing the word of God. The Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. We understand that the individual who wrote those powerful words was John, the beloved apostle himself, who had been banished to the Isle of Patmos. Listen, friend, your testimony should be a reflection of how much of the word of God you have living inside of you. For the word of God is alive. It is not dead. As the author of the book of Hebrews puts it, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. You see, my friends, the word of God is more than just words on paper. It is a living, breathing book. And if you are a Christian and are daily in the scriptures, then you are armed and dangerous. Job said, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. That's provided for us in Job chapter 23, verse 12. When our Lord was tempted by the devil for 40 days, as we are told in Matthew's gospel, we understand that in chapter number four, it was the word of God that the Lord Jesus Christ used to defeat the enemy. It was not the wisdom of men. It was not the wonder of the mind. It was not the wit of the moment. No, my friends, it was the word of God 
For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Why? Because it is the word of God, the scriptures that are alive. Catch it, my friends. It was the day when our Lord was to be risen. The disciples and others were discouraged and defeated so that some of them decided to go to the tomb where our Savior would lie in state. When they got there, they found the tomb empty, but it was not completely empty for standing by were two men wearing shining garments. The Bible says those heavenly guests began to speak. And in Luke chapter 24, verse 6 and 7, they said, He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. The words that follow excites me. For in verse number 8 of that same chapter, we read, and they remembered his words. You see, my friend, after hearing the word of God, uh, those that were gathered that day, their entire scenario changed. The discouraged became encouraged. The despondent became responded. The dead spirit was made alive. And why is this? It's because of the power of the scripture. And they remembered his words. What about you, my friend? Do you remember his words? Do you have the word of God applied to your life and to your heart? As we've already read it, the Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You see, my friend, your testimony should be a reflection of how much of the word of God you have living on the inside of you. Those who know the scriptures are considered to be armed and dangerous. Well, my friend, we're going to have to end our study right here. But are you one who would classify it as being a person of interest? Does your life reflect one who's considered by others to be armed and dangerous? If not, why not? You should be armed in the scriptures. Friend, come to know Jesus as your Savior. Trust him as your Lord, and he will equip you for the battle to which you and I are to be engaged in. Will you respond to the Lord's call? Will you answer the call? And when the war is over and the faith You've been listening to Pastor Curtis McMiller of Heritage Baptist Church with an encouragement to answer the call. Call us at 262-654-4665 or go on our website, www.heritagebaptistkenosha.com. That's www.heritagebaptistkenosha.com or 262-654-4665. Be a part of Answer the Call. Oh.